Hey everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. In today's episode, we're going to be studying a piece by the multidisciplinary artist known as Other Worlds. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at trust, truth, and betrayal. We're also going to explore some inspirations from the painting, The Death of Julius Caesar. So let's jump right into it. So at first sight, we see a rather jarring composition. We see this lone figure in the act of being stabbed and murdered by six other figures here. It is no doubt a rather terrifying, unsettling, and even jarring introduction introduction to this very symbolic scene. One of the first things I notice is the use of space here next to the impact of color. We'll talk about color here in a second, but just in the use of space, you have all these subjects standing in the foreground, and the setting of here is quite grand as well. We'll talk a bit more about that here in a second as well. But regardless, you see within this, there is this accent within the composition, right? The background is this kind of grayish, almost like a sand color. Sorry, I mean beige, kind of a beige or a sand or golden type of color. And within this, you have this vibrant use of color here. This no doubt elevates these forms within the composition and brings our eye drawn back to these subjects time and time again. And on the use of color, I think this is incredibly important here. Of course, that vibrant color draws our eye to the forms in the foreground here, but you may also notice how the use of color is quite diverse within this display wrap. Our lone subject, he has two cloaks. That is in direct contrast to each subject, which wears a single cloak. So this lone subject is the only one who wears red and blue. There is a bit of clashing going in within that, both symbolically, visually, and quite literally here. You may also notice a slight sense of texture, right? We see this from the garb or the cloth which our subjects wear. There's also a brilliant sense of texture in the background as well, all of which immerses so well within this composition. Even though this is kind of stylistic, it is also pretty realistic as well. So it certainly provides a testament to the realism and sheer skill of the original artist here. But like I said, even though it is quite realistic, it also is, you know, stylistic and cartoonish as well. I think that's just so important here. And I also see, you know, the sense of motion within the composition, right? Each subject is in the act of, you know, slashing or whipping or stabbing. And so we see this you know, almost a still shot in time, and you certainly feel like they're about to just jump into motion. Even our unknown subject is in the act of falling, so that's so important when we're looking at this work, and there certainly is a sense of implied motion there. Everywhere from the, you know, curvature of our lone subjects, all this motion, this visual weight is just falling down towards this lone subject set in center. I want to ask you guys, you know, how do you feel when you first view this composition? Of course, this work is, the setting of this scene is quite interesting, right? It is highly ornate. It almost looks like a, you know, gothic cathedral or a chapel of some kind or another. It is quite reminiscent of sacred spaces. It is incredibly ornate, so it points to the, you know, advancement of technology, the advancement of civilization and culture. But within this, there is a actor soiling of the sacred within this work. I think that is pretty important. The sacred is being turned against. And on that topic, we see six figures in the act of killing a seventh figure. You know, there are more subjects, such as the one on the left and the subject on the right, but they are not participating in this act of betrayal. For example, we look at the subject on the left, he is shocked by what's happening. We look at the subject on the right, he is almost pulling back or trying to stop this figure from lashing that whip. But we see six figures, one, two, three, four, five, six, killing the seventh figure. We know from symbolism, seven is considered a holy or a sacred number, right? That is traditionally seen in the context of Christianity, where the seventh day is the Sabbath or Sunday, where everything in God's work is complete. But we see six figures, for example, 666, killing the seventh figure. So perhaps we're looking at a regression from the sacred or the divine back into, you know, dark or demonic times. It's hard to say exactly what's you know, looking at the symbolism there, perhaps I'm going a bit too deep, but regardless, we see six figures killing the seventh figure here. And we also see these two demons kind of watching over, perhaps they're bearing witness. One of them almost looks kind of shocked or disgusted by the sight. Perhaps that even points to, you know, this betrayal or this sense of evil here. Even that disgusts the demons above. So, you know, they kind of look over. I got to mention that as well. But regardless, we see six figures killing the seventh. And within this composition, there's obvious, you know, this is the victim within this work. He is at the center. All this visual weight is just casting down upon him. So, you know, the order of this composition, the symbolism of this work, it all points into this lone subject. All these implied lines converge on our lone figure. He also carries, 
you know, this slight sense of jewelry here, perhaps I even see a cross. It's hard to see from here, but regardless, this is an act of betrayal. In a lot of ancient symbolism, there's a concept of an inner cycle and an outer cycle. Inner cycles are things like medieval tournaments, you know, competition within the context of civilization, but an outer cycle is conflict between civilizations. So within this work, we see, you know, the inner cycle breaking out into the outer cycle where society is breaking down, it is decaying, and conflict is rising within that as well. You know, inner cycles are a lot more important they are friendly competition and they benefit the society but an outer cycle is something which breaks down decays and even destroys society so there is an extinction that you know could happen from that breaking down and the decay of civilization but within this work the title of this scene as visited the sun is quite reminiscent of icarus icarus of course is a greek myth where he tried to fly with his wings but he got too high to the sun which then melted the glue on his wings and he fell down there's a lot of different variations of that myth of course but regardless it points to this sense of ambition within this scene when i saw this on twitter the original title that i saw was fiends and of course when you fiend for something that it is a immense passion or even a lust or say an envy for something and within this work we see these people who are getting too close to power of course they're trying to attain power by killing the leader here the leader once again is signified by multiple different cloths while all these different subjects wear single colored cloths so there is an ambition within this composition that's just impossible to miss the original artist does cite the death of julius caesar as just one of the inspirations of this work this of course shows the death of Julius Caesar in the Roman Empire, where he was stabbed and betrayed by his fellow countrymen. Of course, that is quite reminiscent of this scene. When I first saw this work, that is instantly what my mind was drawn to. So we see this, you know, degradation of the sacred, this trust, truth, and betrayal within this work. And it's really a cautionary tale to beware of the positions of power and the people who can turn on you as a result of that. But regardless, it's a very symbolic scene and a very deep one at that. I really hope you'll enjoy it today. We talked about so many different things from these sense of implied lines all converging on our victim. We talked about the degradation and the soiling of the sacred within the halls of this highly ornate, you know, chapel, palace. It's hard to say exactly where we are, but regardless, it's a very symbolic scene. There is no doubt about that. We talked about the use of color within this composition. Of course, each subject has a single colored garb, but our lone subject wears two different colored garb, kind of pointing to this sense of status within this composition. We talked about the six killing the seventh. Six figures are killing a figure of the seventh, perhaps pointing to a regression from the sacred back into the dark of the demonic times. But regardless, I really hope you'll enjoy today. If y'all enjoyed today's episode, make sure to check out the original artist, Otherworld. Really, he does a lot of different works based on inspirations of other works. He converges these works into these very detailed compositions. Earlier, I was just talking about the sheer attention to detail. It is stunning, to say the least. But regardless, like I said, I really hope y'all enjoyed today. If y'all did, go check out the original artist, Otherworld. Like I said, doing some amazing stuff, really in the world of digital painting and digital illustration. My name's Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see y'all on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.